brothers and sisters, we remember something if we will look in the gospel reading for today. We see the picture of the Good Shepherd. And what I'd like to do is talk to you about what he has said to us today. Notice in, in the gospel that he says, What shepherd, owning the sheep, would leave 99 sheep who are in good, basically what he's saying is uh, 99 sheep who are, who are in safety and go after the one who is in peril. What shepherd would not do that? You see, because to the shepherd, even the least of them are precious just as we are precious to our Lord. How many of us would he not go after? If we fell away. If we fell out of safety. It tells us something about our Father in Heaven. It tells us that even the, the most de deplorable of sinners, even the worst of us, are precious to him. It tells us that, that even though we fall into sin over and over and over again. He is good to save. How many of us have been lost? How many of us have been, have been in the darkness and wondering? How many of us have, have uh, left the fold because of our own hearts have been hardened by the things of this world? We have to understand something, dear ones, is that the times that we turn away from God, we are, we are facing yet another person and it's the ruler of this world, for he is always behind us. And it says the devil lurks about the fold. And he lurks and looks for ways to pick off the faithful, the weak among us. Those who are little in faith, he works on those the most because he understands that he has a way in if we give it to him. And so we fall away from, from Christ his laws, we fall away from his church, we fall away from his, his love, and we presume our own way, Christ's ways. And any time that we do that, we find ourselves in peril, do we not? None of us are immune to this. None of us are immune to falling away. Lay people are not immune, monks, Monastics, they're not immune. Priests, deacons, subdeacons, exorcists, lectors, even mighty bishops are not immune. For we are as yet human. We do have doubts in our hearts sometimes. How do we deal with this? How do we deal with these doubts that come to us? Often we have to look at something. We have to look at First of all, what has Christ said about the situation that we're dealing with? What has Christ said about our hearts? What has he given to us as a guide? He said to, to us that if we love him, we will follow his commandments. If we love Christ, we will empty ourselves of our wills and that we will follow him. And so we have to be faithful to him because he has given us a church to be faithful to him in. There are many out there today that say, well, I follow Christ, but I will follow no church. Brothers, you are deluded. Because if you are not within the church, you are not following Christ because he told us his commandment. He said, love one another, to be with one another, worship with one another. There are no solitary Christians world because those who choose not to follow Christ and his church have chosen to be outside of it. This is a hard lesson to teach. This is a hard lesson to learn. This is something because in our culture we are thought we are brought up to be individuals. We are brought up to be um, we're brought up to be thinking that within us is everything that we need to engage the world. The hard lesson though is, is that in the things of the, of the faith, we are not sufficient. And that we come together, that only with Christ are we sufficient. This is something which tears at our souls because 
of our upbringings and because of the things that we see, we, we prefer to think that we are right all the time. And I have been guilty of that. I have preferred to, be, to think myself right all the time. I will tell you my failings is that the first of these is in that, that I'm not right all the time. And once I predicate that error, I realize that I need to be in submission to Christ as well. And so the thing that I will tell you, brothers and sisters, dear ones in Christ, is that think to your hearts and think to your minds and think to your soul the things for which you find yourself in error of and admit that and come to Christ. Because I can tell you that from this experience here, of me being up here in front of you, I come to you as the worst of sinners, as the chief of sinners, and one who is in error a lot of times. And so, do not use me as an example of strength, but use me as an example of what not to do sometimes. Because often I fail. We are told by Paul the Apostle that I am chief among sinners, for often I do not do that which I should, and often I do that which I should not. I stand before you today in that mold as chief of sinners, just as we stand before God in that way. We look at God and say, I come to you not out of my righteousness, without my weakness. And so it is in such a way that we have to come to Christ. As we heard in the psalm, we heard in the psalm the thought that um, God does not desire sacrifices and burnt offerings, but it's a broken and contrite heart. This is the way that we come to Him. So, in the gospel reading today, we realize that we are that lamb who went out and strayed away. And that even though we have strayed away, the good shepherd is good and just to come after us. And that if we will simply turn to him in all of our weakness, he will make us strong. He will give us hope and a way forward. In the name of the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit.